right, let's take a look at the starter file here. We've got this X-Wing cockpit model, We've got the camera sitting inside the cockpit, and we have this cube. Let's switch over to solid mode here. What we can do for now is just hide this cube. We have to do some basic modeling and let's shift A and bring in a cylinder. And down in the bottom left, we'll change the vertices to eight and radius we can maybe say 0 0.05, depth we can say 0 0.05 as well. And if we press tilde and view selected, we can zoom right into that. So what we want to do though, is set the origin of the cylinder to be the bottom. And you'll see why in a minute. So we can tab into edit mode, press three to go into face select, select that bottom, press shift S, cursor to selected, then tab out to object mode, right click, set origin to 3D cursor. So that will be our basic star. Now we're not going to need to see this, but we will use it in the geometry node setup. So for now, let's hide it and disable it from rendering. So now let's bring back the cube, select that and jump into the geometry nodes tab. We'll click new. And we do want to work with a cube, but we want to be able to tweak the size of the cube. So let's select the group input, press X, shift A and bring in another cube. Alt shift click to join that geometry to the output. And now let's actually go into the camera. So this cube, let's make sure that it's outside the bounds of the camera and the Z as well. This is going to be our starscape. I don't know if it matters too much the depth of this Y. We can give it a little bit of depth. So let's shift A and bring in a, uh, a mesh to volume. And then let's shift A again and pull in distribute points in volume. So now we've got our basic stars. We'll change the density later. But on those points, let's shift A and bring in instance on points. And let's pull in that cylinder that we had earlier and connect that to the instance. Um, let's also spin that on the Y, I think 90 should do it. And I'm going to rename this to star and let's pin that so we don't lose our geometry node setup. So maybe let's randomize the scale shift A to bring in a random value. We'll give it 0.01 to maybe 0.6. Let's bump the density up and try six, maybe 10 even. That's pretty good. I think some of those stars are still too big. So let's dial down the max scale there. Okay, that looks good for now. So now let's look ahead to see what this is going to look like when the jump activates. If we shift A and bring in scale instances, we can play with the scale of these stars and we want them to stretch towards the X wing. And to do that, we can scale in the Z direction because that's the top of that cylinder that we modeled. And you'll notice that they scale from the very bottom of that cylinder. So as we increase Z, they simply grow towards the X-Wing. So what is a good max scale? Well, we can find that by increasing this Z to the point that they're close to the cockpit. This one concerns me, but we'll see when it's rendered. So 927 on the Z. So let's set that back to one for now. Let's talk about the jump parameters. Um, at the start, of this animation, I want there to be a specified duration of frames where nothing's really happening. This is the moment just seconds before the jump activates. And after that delay, there'll be a certain number of frames where the hyperdrive will ramp up and the stars will stretch out towards the cockpit. So those I want to be variables in the geometry node setup so that we can tweak them to our liking as far as the end frame. So I want to be able to specify how many frames we should wait before the jump activates, and then how many frames after that it takes for the jump to fully activate. So this will make more sense as we just build this out. Let's pull in a seed time node. We'll use that frame and we'll say, if the frame is greater than uh, some amount, which will be the group input, press N to pull up the sidebar here and we'll call it start frame. And we'll set that to be 30 frames for now. So if we reach 30 frames, that means that the hyperdrive is activating, which means this result will be true on frame 31. So on frame 31, we want to start scaling our stars. So we can make a basic setup for that scale where we shift A and bring in a switch. And for the switch, we'll make this be a vector. And if we're less than the start frame, if we're less than frame 31, 
will simply be scale of one to see those stars. And we can plug that in right now to see that that is true. We're sitting on frame one. Um, and if we go into frame 31, all the stars disappear because they're scale zero. But let's change that to 927 on the Z and of course one on the X and the Y. And you can see how the stars stretch. So now if we shift left arrow to go back to the star of our playback, press spacebar, you can see that there's a delay and then those stars stretch as the hyperdrive is activated. And we'll finesse that to make it look really cool in just a minute. So now let's make it so that instead of immediately jumping to the full scale, the final scale, let's animate to that scale. So after the jump starts, we have the remaining frames left to animate the scale of these stars. Let's actually change this to 90. So then we have 30 second or 30 frame wait, and then 60 frames will be for animating the stars. So to specify that, let's shift D on this scene time. We're going to use the frame again. And I don't want anything to happen as far as the timing of this animation goes until we hit that specified start frame. So let's pull in a math node and we'll say maximum of the start frame. So what this node is going to do is it's going to allow us to sit and wait basically for the start of this jump animation. And we wait until the frame we are on is greater than the start frame we specified. So basically 31. And so once 31 is hit, this will start outputting 31, 32, 33, etc. So to convert that frame count into a zero to one ratio, we can pull in a map range and the from minimum is going to be our start frame. So we're going to map from frame 30 all the way up to frame 90. So we can right click the end frame, copy as new driver, and right click the from max and paste as driver. So we'll map values 30 to 90 to zero to one. So we can now use that ratio to drive a shift A mix node where we drive the A being one and B will be that 927. We're basically going to replace these numbers with a combine XYZ. So shift A combine XYZ, plug that in. This should be one on the X and Y. And this float will go into the Z. So this result drives the factor for scaling up these stars. So let's take a look at what that looks like. You go back to the end frame, you can see that some of the stars are coming into the cockpit. So we can dial that back just a little bit, hold shift and drag to the left until that star disappears. Okay, so let's go back to frame 31. You can see this is where the stars are starting to lengthen or they're starting to stretch. I want to give that a little bit of randomization at the stars. They're not all uniform length being stretched. So we can shift A to pull in a random value and we can give it values of zero to 150 maybe. You can always play with the seed if you want. Let's pull in a math node and we will just add that value to 821. So hover over 821, control C, hover over this add value and control V to paste that and then connect those two there. It's subtle, but I like it. So let's play that back. It's starting to look pretty good. I think it's a little slow. Um, maybe I'll change this to frame 70 so that it happens faster. There you go. That's looking a lot better. But let's give this a bit more juice and add in a float curve. And we'll just click the middle and drag that down and just play with this until you can feel the difference of the acceleration. So it starts slow and then they start to stretch faster and faster, which I think that looks pretty cool. Quick pause. If you're enjoying this, hit subscribe. I'm passionate about Blender and creating quality tutorials to help others learn. Your support helps the channel grow and brings more Blender content your way. Thank you. Now back to the tutorial. Now another detail if you watch the Star Wars movies, when the spaceship is idling, there's a certain amount of stars in the background. And then when the jump activates, we'll go to frame 31, sometimes the density will actually change. So we're sitting at a density of 10 here in, this, in the distribute points. Let's pull in a switch, change that to float, and we'll take that 10, copy and paste that. And when the jump is activating, let's maybe try doubling that. And we'll use this setup here, shift P, F2, and call it jump active. And we'll take that result and plug that into the switch and then connect this to the density. So now we're on frame 31. So we know the jump is active. We can see that the density changed. So if we use the left and right arrows to go back and forth, 
you can see that there are more stars appearing, but maybe set it to 25. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. Let's move this over. Let's bring in a set material. We'll set that to the end and we'll type material because there's so many other materials that came in with the X-Wing model. And let's make sure that the cube is selected. So let's set up some basic colors. We'll feed these colors into the shader um, using stored named attributes node. So shift A, bring in a color ramp and or at it, shift D that to pull in the second one. So the initial colors of the stars will be this top ramp. And you can tweak this to your liking. I'm going with a warm tone here. Maybe let's uh, change this to, to material preview. Uh, while we're at it, let's go into the world panel and this surface background, just disconnect that so that in rendered it's pitch black. I want a similar color to this, so I'm, gonna, so I'm going to Command C, click this last stop here, Command V, and then click the color itself and just bring the color down so it's a dimmer color. And maybe we'll squeeze that together. So really quick so that we can start to see a preview of this in the viewport, let's shift A and store named attribute and we'll call this color. Now really important, there was a bug back in the day where if you called this color without a U, um, it would collide with some of Blender's internal property names. I don't know if that's fixed. So maybe we'll just call it call for simplicity. We'll change this to be a color we're going to store it on the points itself and we'll plug that into the value. So now let's jump into shading and we'll go into rendered and shift A to bring in an attribute node. We set that on the geometry and we need to retrieve the call property. And let's put that into, let's put that into the emission and change that emission to maybe a hundred. Let's go back to geometry nodes. So now we can see our stars, they are way too bright. And that's because everything is getting a value of zero so only this color is being assigned. So shift A to pull in a random value and zero to one is fine. Plug that value into the FAC. Let's actually change this point to instance because we're still working with instances here to the left. And so now there is no color data on instances because we originally set that to the points. So go back into shading and change geometry to instancer and back to geometry nodes. So right now these stars are too bright. Let's dial that strength down to 20 and go back into geometry nodes. And I just realized we're sitting on frame 31, so the jump is activating, which is why it looks so dense. So let's go back to frame 30 and look at the density here. I think I do want to change this random value so that the stars are still a little bit smaller. Let's tweak this second color here. That looks pretty good to me. So now we get to frame 31, the density increases, but I want the colors to start changing as well. And if you look at the Star Wars movies, you'll see that there's usually purples and blues and whites. So let's set that up right now with some cyan we'll add another stop here maybe a darker kind of blue and this last color will be a bit of purple and let's shift right arrow to go to the very end and let's connect these we'll take the same random value here plug that into the factor and now we've got two colors competing for this named attribute so shift a to pull in a switch set that to color and color one will be false and the second color will go into true so the switch is driven by this jump active. And if the jump is active, then we'll switch to the blues and the purples. And maybe let's set this to constant. So let's go back to somewhere in the middle of this jump. That looks pretty cool, but I think there's too much purple. So let's knock that back a bit. Yeah, just a tiny bit. That would be like the accent color. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. Let's go into the compositor, press N to get rid of the side panel, click use nodes. Let's add our bloom or a glare node, change that to bloom, high quality. And of course we have to change this to always. So now we start to see this glare. That might be a bit too strong, something like that. That's going to be very strong near the end of this jump on frame 70. I think I want a bit more bleed here. So let's adjust the size about the size and the strength. That's looking pretty awesome. Um, one problem I'm thinking of, is when the jump first starts in Star Wars, that actually doesn't look too bad. I think that looks pretty good. I was gonna say the emission strength could change at the very start. What does that look like on frame 31? Yeah, let's definitely, um, let's tweak the emission strength at the very start. So we'll use the, the jump factor, which is this guy here, and shift D, the store named attribute. We're going to store a float on the instance and we'll call it jump factor. And that will be the output of this flow curve, which is zero to one. Plug that into the value. So now let's go into shading and view camera. So this is the initial, this is the very first frame of the jump. 
So we want there to be just a little bit of emission. So shift D, this attribute, we'll change this to jump factor. And let's tweak the strength here. Um, that factor is gonna be zero to one. Right now, because it's the very start of the jump, it's a uh, value of zero. So let's bring in a mix node, plug that in to the factor, and that'll go from a factor of two to 20, which I think is what we initially had. So now as you play back the animation, it gets brighter and brighter and brighter. So the problem that we just ran into is by setting the initial jump to have an emission of two, um, the idle stars are sitting with an emission of two and they're not very bright. So let's go to the geometry nodes. Let's click this color here and let's bump the value to 20 and play around with the slider. So we get some dim and some that are a lot brighter. So it's hard to see the preview in the viewport when you press play, but if you scrub through, it's a little bit easier to get a feel for what that looks like. I might even boost the density to 30 and see what that looks like at the end of the animation, which looks super sweet in my opinion. All right, we're getting really close. The last thing I wanna try doing is, let's go to solid mode here. We've got this light sitting in the cockpit. Let's make sure that's selected and shift D press Y and let's drag that on the Y axis. Let's make sure it's really close to the ship itself. I'm going to view camera and look at the rendering. So that light, if we go to the light properties, what happens if we boost the power to 200, 2000? Yeah, we start to see these rim, this rim light effect here. Um, I might even go with like 20,000. Oh, that looks awesome. Yeah, yeah. So I'm about to use some keyframes here, which kind of breaks using the parameters for the start frame. I'm pretty happy with the one second wait. So I'm gonna put a keyframe on frame 30 to set this light to be zero. And we'll hover over that power and press I. And then on frame 90, we'll set that power to be 20,000 and press I. So now, as we scrub through, we can see that that rim light starts to kick in. I think I'm actually going to drag that keyframe all the way to frame 79. Okay, frame 70 looks pretty good. So as the warp effect intensifies, we start to get that rim light on the ship, which really sells this effect. That looks awesome. Okay, so let's get ready to render this. We'll go into the render tab, turn on ray tracing, check out color management. Does anything look better as far as contrast goes? High contrast looks not too bad. I think I like high contrast. We'll go into the output, go to video, encoding, MPEG-4, codec H.264, perceptually lossless, and we should be good to go. Go up to the render and render animation.